Welcome to Freight Waves. We've got breaking news right here at Freight Alley talking about President Trump's tweet about raising tariffs on China by 10% effective September 1st. It's a big deal. Uh, one of the things that I, I've speculated, Henry. Henry Byers is our market experts on global trade. We're going to talk about it a bit. Henry, one of the things I've speculated that would actually happen is that with the, with the election cycle, the president would be distracted doing, you know, running for president. Sure. But it seems very interesting that a day after the Fed cut of 25 basis points that we had this announcement of 10% tariffs on China. What do you make of this? Yeah, it's interesting. It's especially interesting leading into peak season. Um, the fact that he's now announcing these tariffs on what's mainly apparel, retail, um, you know, consumer goods in the lead up to this holiday season is even more interesting, especially given the, the rate cuts yesterday. So it, we didn't see, you know, this is the last batch of uh, tariffs to go into effect because the, the goods that have been impacted before really relate to the industrial sector and some other commodities that uh, consumers have uh, have not, have uh, mostly not been touched. But what do you make of it now and the timing, as you mentioned, going into peak? What, what do you think is going to happen? Well, I think, uh, you know, if there's speculation that it could increase to 25% above that 10%, I think you're going to start to see a pull forward. And yeah, but we've not seen that yet. He's only no, talking about 10%. Not, yep. and, and do you think, do you think that means that there may be more tariffs to come? Could be, could be. I think if, if you know, uh, you know, retailers, people who are mainly affiliated with consumer goods do anticipate a higher increase, they could start to pull forward like we saw last year, which caused quite a bit of chaos in the logistics industry. So if we think about port activity, it's been driving the freight market for much of the past year mm -hmm. in terms of uh, has, it, has had an outsized impact. In fact, the, the volume increase that we saw earlier this week, a lot of that was related to the northeastern ports, just in terms of them having a lot of throughput. Sure. Um, you anticipate there could be a reaction in freight demand to move freight and cargo into the domestic market prior to peak? Potentially, you know, with the September 1st deadline, it only gives you about 30 days. Um, so if you're going to hit West Coast, it's really about a 12 to 14 day transit. If you are coming from China, you know, there have been a lot of manufacturers that have moved producing, sourcing, you know, to countries like Vietnam and further into Southeast Asia. So the ports have been driving the freight market for the past, really the past year, sure. really related to the first round of tariffs that were talked about mm -hmm. uh, in 2018 and really through 2019. We've seen really the northeastern ports have been driving a lot of the recent demand and surge in activity in the domestic trucking market. Uh, do you think that's going to happen again? Do you think shippers are going to react to this, this tariff and say that they need to actually accelerate their cargo movement? Yeah, especially especially given the fact that there was a rate cut. You know, a lot of people thought that the, the you know experimenting with the tariffs could be could be you know Trump wanting to um, you know get the rate cuts, obviously. Um, but yeah, I think you know especially given now, I think the national people like the National Retail Federation, a lot of these retailers leading up to peak season could say, okay, maybe it's a little more serious than we initially thought, and could start pushing up you know those transit times out of China to Los Angeles. It's really about 12 to 14 days via via vessel. Um, could definitely see some reaction from those guys. How, how long does it take to go from the ports in China to the East Coast? Uh, usually about a 30 to 32 day transit on so average. So really the choice that shippers have to bypass the Chinese tariffs, mm -hmm. if they're going to if they're going to legitimately move the cargo from China and not by to like Vietnam or somewhere like that, is they've got to move the cargo starting today really yep. uh, off of China load loaded on the boats and get it over to the u.s prior to the the date where this is going to affect september 1st uh you know this is is this august 1st it's august 1st yeah, august yeah, 1st. sorry uh august 1st we have 30 days yep so yeah and, and i've already heard from sources that boats are already full so leading in this peak season this is especially interesting because you know if the vessels are already full any retailers that are moving any uh demand up moving any shipments forward are going to be competing for space on a level uh that would rival last year and it's and ten percent is not a huge cut, but you mentioned going into twenty five percent cuts could be, uh, you know, detrimental to mm -hmm. a lot of the cost of supply chain. Particularly, in, you know, uh, in consumer goods, the margins are already tight. Absolutely, uh, they don't have substantial margins. Taking a twenty five percent rate uh, rate increase, tariff increase could be could be demonstrative in terms of the impact it actually has. Absolutely, and especially you know the, these companies are depending on this time of year to to you know generate a lot of those margins. So. Um, it could have quite an impact on those guys. You know, I find it interesting that it, the timing of it right after the Fed cut, 
also just the fact that we're moving into retail peak where retailers make 40% of their sales really from Black Friday to December and they mm -hmm. have to get that cargo uh, to Christmas. They have to get that cargo into the domestic shore prior to that, usually September. So timing is really interesting. What do you think is going to happen to the domestic trucking market? Are we going to see a lot of short term activity or uh, do we think it's what do you think is going to happen? If there is indeed a pull forward of, of any capacity, um, you know, last year we saw quite a disruption, especially in the ports of LA and Long Beach, where there are about 100,000 TUs additional in October and December from that pull forward. If you look at what spot rates did at, during that time, especially from uh, on lanes like LAX to Dallas, um, you saw them pretty much top out during that same time period, uh, which led to you know some Class A or truck order activity that was already high. Uh, but it maybe even push it even higher. So I think you're gonna see, you know, warehouses could potentially be full right now. So not a lot of, uh, you know, the reaction's gonna be pretty significant, I think. Is there any good news for trucking companies? I mean, certainly the importers, short-term uh, folks in the freight forwarding industry benefit, because actually air cargo could pick up. I mean, you sure. could see a lot of air cargo activity with people trying to pre uh, front run. Although the delta of moving stuff on air cargo versus ocean, uh, it, it costs a lot more than just the 10%, so mm -hmm. uh, we'll see how that works. But do you think that this is good news for short, at least short term for the trucking industry? I think from a, from a carrier's perspective, absolutely. Because I mean, you know, if, if rates, you know, are down significantly right now, this could, um, you know, enable those rates to increase in a way where it, it generally um, is beneficial for a lot of these guys. You know, they're receiving better rates. Um, there's just more cargo to move. Luckily, you know, this, this freight will be moved out, um, you know, better than it was last year across ports like Oakland, ports like Seattle and Tacoma, the Northwest Seaport Alliance. So you could see some, some good activity in each one of those markets, not just the port of LAX and Long Beach. Got it. Well, it's just certainly a breaking story and one to watch. We picked it up on our signal data that's in sonar. Mm -hmm. We have digital signals. And whenever there's a movement in the data itself, we actually see it and are able to identify it, uh, which took place just a few minutes ago. So yep. this is... Certainly news, there's not a lot of information about this tariff, but what we've seen with the Trump administration is when they do talk about tariffs, they actually follow up with them. It's not just a negotiation tactic. They're willing to actually take it all the way through. Especially given the, the rate cuts, I think it's especially important to remember that there was a theory there that he was only trying to achieve those rate cuts. Now that that's happened, it's, it's quite significant in my opinion. Got it. We'll, we'll pay attention. Stay tuned to Freight Waves as we dive into this subject and more right on FreightWaves.com.